Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Post-fight review, Moses Itoma versus Kevin Espindola, which was on a Queensbury card in the United Kingdom. This went all six rounds, Moses Itoma cantering to a decision. And the action wasn't necessarily the most interesting thing about this fight, because I think after about two or three rounds, it sort of became a little bit samey. But it's more the talking points and the things falling out of this fight that is the really interesting thing because I think we've got a glimpse of who Moses Itoma is going to be at a higher level. We've also got a glimpse of potentially a problem he's going to need to rectify but also the matchmaking. It's been really tough so far so if they wanted to let all the air out of the hype balloon they succeeded and we'll talk about that. But the fight proper will just quickly sort of round through the action. I actually thought early on Moses Itoma at 241 pounds, which is lighter than some of his earlier fights, I thought that was a better weight for him. I thought he looked a little bit quicker with the hand speed. He's got decent footwork, decent punch selection, and he was being very selective. He was managing the range quite well. I mean, he was looking out for those wild sort of uh, right hands that Espindola likes to throw. But in his opponent in Espindola, pretty negative character. So this always had rounds written all over it. Espindola has been taken the distance by a number of fighters, uh, or has taken fighters um, the distance a number of times, I should say. Even and Dichko is the uh, probably the best example but you have a case where Moses Itoma looked to be sort of starting to sort of just wind up a little bit starting to really get into his work into the, through the second round but he just never really sort of uh, went through the gears and there was a really concerning statement that he said after the first round which was caught on camera and discussed by commentary that he didn't want to blow his tank and maybe he was thinking of Matty Harris just a week ago where he blew his tank and got taken out by Konstantin Dobyshenko. Or perhaps that um, Moses Itoma is managing a potential gas tank issue that he has to be cognizant of. I think it's a case uh, in this fight. You could have had different stretches where against a guy who was largely not throwing a lot back that he could have put his punches together a lot more. There could have been more combinations, you know, threes, four, five, sixes. But what you had was mostly one-off shots or a one-two, you know, to, to body and head. And what was landing, I thought, actually was generally quality work. And we really did have a glimpse of, I think, what Moses Utoma is going to be at a higher level. Not just through this fight, but now we've got two data points against two really solid, durable journeymen. You had Dobashenko and now Espindola, and what we've seen is Moses Zutoma is going to box and move. And I think that's probably going to be his path at a higher level as well. I think all this hype that they were building in about this guy being a knockout artist and all that sort of stuff is overblown. And I think we've got the glimpse of what he is going to do. And actually, there were a couple of rounds with different stretches of it. He kind of reminded me of a young Joseph Parker, just some of the way that he was moving and boxing. And, you know, obviously a young Joseph Parker, when he was coming up, his matchmaking was pretty soft and he was blowing guys out and lots of KOs. And eventually we saw that he didn't have the power at world level and he had to sort of box and move and, you know, be a boxer puncher. Maybe that's also on the cards for someone like Itoma. And I'm not saying he doesn't have power, but obviously we've seen him the last couple of fights not really put a dent in two journeymen. And we did see um, Dobashenko get put down by Matty Harris the other week, so it is possible to put Dobashenko down. But anyway, um, ultimately it petered out here, 60 to 54. There was um, a few little small stretches in the final round where Itomi tried to sort of ramp it up, obviously. Being the last round, he sort of let his hands go a little bit more. Ultimately couldn't put a dent in Espindola to any real degree. But as I say, it's hard to sort of look good sometimes against a guy who's negative. But, you know, perhaps he could have done a little bit better letting his hands go a little bit more. But he was obviously conscious of the gas tank, having said after that first round he didn't want to blow his tank. And he didn't. He really did box conservatively at times, boxed within himself, and obviously wanted to pace himself. Also something that we've seen a lot from Joseph Parker, who, you know, often through mid-rounds of uh, longer fights, 10, 12 rounds, will go on a bit, a bit of an energy conservation mode. So you have a case, Itoma... Now 4-0, um, 
two knockouts, and those were against absolute trash opposition, as you expect the first couple of fights. And the matchmaking for him, as I noted on Twitter, has been really strange when you consider the puddings he was fed first up. Then they've skipped all these sort of um, lower level journeyman levels to go to some of the most durable journeyman in the game today and Konstantin Dobyshenko who I'm dubbing the new Camille Sokolowski and look he took out Matty Harris last week and now also Kevin Espindola who's goes, gone rounds with other fighters and clearly is durable and can survive and look after himself so they've cut out a whole you know level of fighters um, I think in some respects there's going to be a lot of value for Itoma from these couple of fights because it does give him valuable rounds. And he's seeing that he can't just knock over everyone who's put in front of him. So it's a bit of a reality check early. But also, are they going to continue along these lines? But if they wanted to let out all the hype out of the hype balloon, they've done so. The matchmaking in that regard has been quite strange because they're talking him up as this big knockout art artist and then giving him the last two fights really hard opponents to knock out, which seems to be a bit counterintuitive to what they were earlier trying to present him to be, which they could have actually given his age, 18 years old, for a couple of years, just fed him absolute no ones as they started to do. They could have continued that, or they could have got guys that were at a slight, you know, get a Phil Williams, that sort of thing. But they've gone straight to the better journeyman um, at, a, uh, at a lower level. So, you know, it's, it's interesting in that regard because there will be a lot of people now, and I've seen it on social media, saying that Itoma's no good, he's not going anywhere and all that sort of stuff. He is 18 years old. He's got a lot of developing to do. He's probably going to get stronger and better with time. That I don't have any doubt of. But I guess, you know, a lot of people are looking at this going, does he have the goods to go all the way? Does he have those tools? Is he even at 25 or 27? Is he going to be of a level where he's going to ma match it at world level? I think it's too early to say, but I do think obviously he's got a lot of good tools. I mean, the punch placement is good, good footwork. He moves well for a heavyweight, fast hands. There's a lot to like about Moses Itoma, and he was slipping some shots and um, showing some good, you know, defense at times. But you have to sort of kind of go, okay, well, it was against a pretty negative guy in Espindola who telegraphed the right hand pretty badly. But I think there is the ingredients there that there is something here. Maybe the power is not what it's made to be. Maybe he's going to, as his man's strength comes in, as, as people always say, he's only going to get bigger and stronger. I actually thought coming in at 241 pounds was much better because I thought it was a bit of a red flag. He was basically out the gate for his first sort of fight or two at 250. But at 241, I think that's going to be there or thereabouts where he probably is going to be in his optimum sort of weight for his career or a decent chunk of it. I think obviously as he gets older, you know, he's probably going to, his body will change a bit as well. But I think around that weight, 240 pounds is going to be about right. But if they wanted to take all the hype out of the uh, balloon just to give him a bit more time to develop and away from, you know, and so it doesn't get to his head, well, they've done that job. So it'll be interesting to see who they match him with. But I'm interested in your take. And also, do, do we have a glimpse of his future in terms of what sort of fighter he's going to be at the next level, at a, or at a much higher level? But also, did we get a red flag with his comment after round one about the gas tank and also the way that he fought because he clearly did not go through the gears and deliberately so for much of the fight. Interested in your take on that? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.